Okay, so I don't normally vlog. I'm not very good at this. Uh, I don't know how to keep it interesting. Um, Random quirky cutaway to imply that I have personality and get you endeared to me. But a bunch of you would hate me forever and I would probably regret it if I didn't vlog my trip to London. So thank you, Amazon, for flying me out to London to, to see the Wheel of Time premiere and not force me to be positive or anything. They're just like, yeah, come and say what you're gonna say. So, all right. Let's go. <laughs> but I've packed, as you can see, my bag is right there. And I'm about to spend four days in London, which I'm really excited about. I still don't know who I'm gonna have an opportunity to interview or spend time with. I just know that I've had to have like a thing shoved in my nose and all that for the flight, which I'm happy I had to do that. It's good, but at the same time, I almost sneezed on a nurse. I got my COVID booster too, so I'm like, super COVID proof. I've flown a lot before, so I'm not really nervous about travel. I mean, the biggest thing that annoys me is other people who don't know how to travel in front of me. Like that drives me nuts. Yes, take your shoes off. For the love of f Hindsight London Daniel here. They didn't require me to take off my shoes at any point. But I'm gonna live stream while I'm there on the red carpet. I'm gonna do a review that they're gonna let me do. I think it has to be spoiler free, but then I'll have my spoiler filled review after that. And yeah, but okay, let's go to the airport. I'm gonna do a bunch of those like travel shots where you see me going from place to place with music over them because that's what people do and I feel like I need to now. So I'm gonna do that. So far, travel's been super smooth. Got the airport security. No top flat. Uh, the only hang up is I sat down and started uploading Revel's Creed, the audiobook, to ACX to get that to guys, get that to you all uh, faster than I was originally hoping. Except now ACX glitched out on me. It's actually their problem, and I'm waiting to hear back from customer service. So the travel's going great, but issues with my book stress me out. First flight was delayed, but managed to make it after sprinting through an airport. It feels very sketchy sprinting through an airport. I'd like to give a thank you again to Amazon for flying me business. I've never flown business before. It comes with flying. goblins here <laughs> so i've successfully landed in london landed landed in london i'm jet lagged <laughs> and i'm gonna go meet some people for lunch uh people like matt hatch from the dusty wheel sarah nakamura and the man of the jedi depending how energetic i am when i'm editing this you'll see faces up or not it's all depending on how i feel <laughs> but uh i'm in my room i've made it one piece a lot of sprinting, but uh, we're good. My driver, they sent a driver. Look, look at me. I got a driver. Look at, look at me. Why do I, look, I don't need a, I'll hitchhike. Anyway, he's a very nice Englishman. He had that kind of like, all right, all right. <laughs> English accent to all the people from the UK watching. I'm sorry. And um, I'm gonna go get food in me and try not to pass out. Homeboy had a rough night. Oh. It's okay, buddy. Let it out. So Amazon, they gave me a gift bag and I figured I'd open it with y'all. Because how could I come to London and, you know, not do an unboxing? Oh, I already grabbed it. Oops. Is this a... It's a very nice Wheel of Time jacket. Look at... Look at the wheel, this wheel of time. I, I haven't actually opened this. I'm extremely jet lagged, so yay. Uh, but it's... A, oh, this is a really nice windbreaker. I've been using the same windbreaker for like before I lived in Alabama. So go scroll through my videos to figure out when that was. Thank you. London Pride Amber Ale. Oh, they're literally giving me alcohol. <laughs> okay, I've never had this, so I hope it's delicious. Caramels of some sort. I normally have a sweet tooth. I'm literally too tired to eat. Why record the video now then, Daniel? Mind your own business. Oh, teas. We have the Royal Blend. Yeah, guess what's next? You'll... I don't think you're capable physically of guessing what's next. You know what, I'll even give you a hint with this sound. Ooh, what could it be? Oh. <laughs> In 
terms of random slack and umbrella dude. English Pewter Company. Oh, wow. <laughs> Is this a Stein? Or does the Stein have to have the toppy part? Either way, I'm... I'm gonna get trashed with this tomorrow. That's, that's nice. Look at it. It's shiny. <laughs> and a show edition of Eye of the World, which I actually got one of these and reviewed it here on my channel. But what I will say is this one actually looks a little better. This is different than the one I got. Is there are multiple printings of the new show cover because this one's smaller and it's got like that denser smack. You know what I'm talking about? Next premiere thing. <laughs> Amanda's vlogging while I'm vlogging. It's kind of rude. Um, hey, Amanda, I, I, I was vlogging. I'm vlogging, Daniel. I'm vlogging. Daniel. Daniel. Why are you not you looking at me? I'm over Daniel, here. Daniel, you can't even vlog with your good camera facing you, loser. And then there's Critter. Oh, yeah. And then um, there's boobs. This is what they do when they put you in the room with the other people who are the media. So you just get a room and there's food and you stay there and then you wait. That's, that's media. Right, look, it's, it's the White House. 92 feet tall, walls 15 feet thick at the bottom, tapering to 11 at the top. And when it was completed, it was one of the tallest buildings in Europe. Now it's kind of dwarfed by all the others, but suffice to say you got the shard on the south side that overlook us at well over a thousand feet. So if you want to see what kind of pull the show has, there's the crown jewels there, and they're currently projecting that on the White Tower. It's called the White Tower. And guys, if you look in the background over there, you can see the Berlin Wall. And stay like that, stay right there, and look away. And then... Okay, Amanda ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> and now if you look in the background, you can, you can see the Lincoln Memorial. And now it's going to be like eight weeks by. Oh, yeah. Anticipation. And now the premiere. Are you having a good premiere so far? I am, yeah. It is, uh, it's good to finally meet you, you know? Same back yeah, to you. I appreciate your work. I, thank you so much. I think um, my favorite one is uh, book three and, and four. This character is a character that goes through, I don't want to give any spoilers, but severe amounts of emotional growth, trauma, and development. As an actor, is that something that you kind of took as a challenge? Or like, how do you approach the growth of Randall Thor throughout the series? Step by step, you know, with, I know, I'm aware of what happens in the books and I'm aware of his potential and his arc. But first, season one, it's just, you know, he starts in the two rivers and I have to make sure that I'm not getting ahead of things. Did you, was it hard to capture the country bumpkin vibe? <laughs> no, 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 no. So, um, what, who's your favorite character? In the books? In the books. Um, I really enjoy Pan and Fane and uh, Loyal. Those are my favorite characters, besides of, of Rand, of course, yeah. I got it together at the end there, I think, a little bit. Hello! Hi! Hey, hey, Hi. Hey, hey. Go right ahead. Hey. Hi, so um, Loyal is one of the favorite characters. Yeah. You must know this. Yeah. What's it like to play somebody that everybody loves? Yeah, I'm not nervous at all. Nice, okay, no pressure. <laughs> bit nervous. Um, uh, I try not to think about it too much because if I do, then I'm just sweating all the time. Yeah. Um, I just do whatever I do. What I always do. Um, I was talking to neighbors here. I was just saying, like, you know, I, I come with, every, I come to every role with a, a level of zen. I try not to take it too seriously, but when I'm doing the work, I take it extremely seriously because I want to deliver the best I can possibly do. Do you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I just complete zen, and I just leave. I keep all the other stuff out the window because I can't. Let that enter, do you know what I'm saying? Don't want to be too hasty. No, no, no. Gotcha. no, no. <laughs> you are absolutely brilliant in Midsummer's Night Dream, I was going to say. Right There's a very overt comedy to that play, yeah. and Loyal has more of a subtle comedy to his character that kind of comes through inadvertently. What was it like trying to tackle that kind of humor throughout the show? Um, again, I think it was, it's the writing. The writing on this show is incredible. So I didn't have to work too hard, do you know what I'm saying? Um, 
it was quite it was quite easy. <laughs> it was quite easy to, to I guess, okay flex, man. Yeah, no, no, I mean it was quite easy to 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 kind of delve into that sort of subtle comedy and and in the in the, the slight because he takes everything so literal. And I think that's what I love about him. He's so in, there's a there's an innocence to him. You know, I don't think it's I don't think it's gullible. I think it's just pure innocence and he's just he just wants to he just wants everyone to be happy. Do you know what I mean? And his his loyalty to the people that he travels with in, on this adventure is what keeps him, you know. So is that he's like a huge child. I, I, I kind of see him that as a huge child. He just wants to be, he just wants everyone to be happy. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think that's where that sort of comedy comes in. So that's that's what I feel anyway. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Appreciate it, man. Stay safe. Hey, hey, hey. How's it hello, going? Hello, hey, hello. welcome, welcome. Hi, hi, hi. So you, you look amazing. Thank you. Thank you. How, sir, how, how, a bit overwhelming and wild, um, to be perfectly honest. I've been feeling all of the emotions today. So uh, I'm so excited to be here and um, seeing my, my, this is AK, <laughs> and seeing her for the first time in a few years, it's been so wild. And so I'm, I'm just thrilled to be here. And I'm, I'm glad that I literally snuck past security so that I could come see you guys. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad you came by. Yeah, no, it was, it was one of those really hilarious things that I was like, and I see my friends and they won't let me, uh, they won't let me say hi, so. Well, I, I'm glad you did. Yeah, I yeah. booked it. And so now I'm going to go make sure that I'm not getting kicked out and I'll leave you guys to see all these amazing people that are coming in. And all I have left to say is enjoy the show tonight. It's going to be great. Yep. Thank all you for right. your contributions. Thank you so much. That was Sarah. Sarah. She is the best. You look amazing, by the way. The boots are great. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Very good. Very excited to finally get to show this massive piece of work to the world. Yeah. It's been a marathon, it seems like, to get through after all these years. Moraine as a character is someone who, you know, you're going in the long tradition of, you know, mentors from Gandalf and Obi-Wan. What's it like to take on a character that's that complex and iconic? Well, she certainly keeps me interested, yeah. <laughs> and I think she keeps she keeps the rest of the cast guessing as well as I hope the audience, which is one of the biggest pleasures. Is that I get to slightly change the temperature and keep people on their toes. And I think her her thing that she says, whereas the we're in terms of the I'll always tell the truth, but it might not be the truth you think you hear is kind of like my mantra <laughs> for playing Moraine. I know that I can, I can have multiple layers of meaning in almost everything I say, and that's what keeps me excited. <laughs> Which is fine. I get to talk to her. Yeah. Oh, Land the Warder is coming over and saying hello to Rosemond. So that's adorable. Daniel, other Daniel. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Rafe. I'm, I'm Critter. Rafe, it's so nice to meet, meet you. you. How are you doing tonight? I am doing pretty well. How are you guys doing tonight? I a mixture of adrenaline and coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Except that it just like and then just emptiness and sad. <laughs> just so hard to process what's happening. <laughs> so you've been on a marathon for the last few years. Yeah. Does it feel real that it's actually done? Like you're getting to, not done. You have season two. Well, no, because I'm actively flying to a scout tomorrow morning. So. <laughs> Uh, so it never feels done. The Wheel of Time is never finished. But I think, you know, this has been something, I don't know, it's interesting, like other things I've worked on before, when you get to this point in the process, you're often like, you know, I am not ready for people to see it. Like, it feels like too soon. It doesn't feel too soon for us. Like, I think we're all ready for it to be out there. And like, we've been working on it such a long time. It's just, I'm excited for people to see it. So we want to express excitement on behalf of the fandom that a fan is putting the Wheel of Time out. It's incredible. And I was wondering if you have like nerd friends that also read it that are bothering you about it, you know? Well, the funny thing is I have a lot of nerd friends that I didn't know were also Wheel of Time readers. Like I had two cousins who read it who I didn't know they read it. And then a third cousin contacted me who had read it all 14 books. And like we just never knew and never connected with each other. And I think that's kind of the fun thing. I think a lot of people read Wheel of Time in a silo, and now it's like they get a chance to talk to people about it. I just read it with my mom, and we only talk to each other about it obsessively for years and years and years. So it's fun to get to talk to other people about it. 
That's actually why I started my channel. I read The Wheel of Time, no one I knew read it, and then I found out a bunch of people did. <laughs> it, turns, it turns out everyone's read it. So many closeted Wheel of Time fans. They're all going to come out of the gutters. Yeah, they're everywhere. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I occasionally get pinched by someone. There's a guy who just leans in and pinches me, and that's how I know I need to end the interview. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you that, but I am. Hello. I would shake show. your hand, but I'm... <laughs> but I wouldn't worry about shaking my hand. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? You guys, are, I'm very well, thank you. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. I interrupted you, I'm sorry. No, I was just <laughs> going to say that I've, all of us have been watching you and, and um, Dusty Wheel. <laughs> I'm be, get your opinions. You know, I don't know how to process that. I hope that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're being really um, critical about Ferris, no, but it's quite right to. You got to thank you, you so much. Super fan, so you know. And it's, thank you for supporting us all. I thank you for making this a reality. Like this is now real. To, and to the five thousand people watching, trust me, they're all crazy excited. So. Well, so are we. We're here. Yeah. Blue carpet, no. It's gotta feel insane after all this work to finally be letting it go. Three years of my life, and I'm really excited that my family's inside, gonna watch it now. Oh, you got all. You got the plus ones and everything. I got the my my sons are here and my husband. So uh, you know. That's how you know. That's how you know you made it when you get the full family in. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's really exciting. You guys are all here. I'm excited to be here, uh, and I'm, I won't remember this tomorrow. It's just pure adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you as well. Thank you so much. I, I mean that. I will not remember. I will not remember any of this. I, if you don't mind, I have a question about Nynaeve, if that's all right. She's a character who I find to have an extreme amount of depth in the nuance of she's like steeped in tradition, yet she's so... You know, she discovers so much. She's someone who's loves so much, but has also used that to fight. As someone who's tackling that character, is it, you know, the writing behind it? What's it like to get in the performance and the mindset of someone who has such development but such complexity from the start? Oh, what a great Dan <laughs> bring with the questions out from the wow. Sorry. <laughs> you know, luckily, I think because there's this. Obviously, we have amazing source material. Thank you, Robert Jordan, and, and Rafe, too. Like, he, he sat down with all of us at the beginning, and, and, and we talked about the characters in depth. I feel like because there's an essence in, of the characters in all of us, it wasn't that hard for me to understand her from the beginning. There's a lot of stuff that goes on underneath Nynaeve, and I, and I, I definitely can relate. She's taught me a lot about control and, and breathing, and, yeah, her, her journey has been really... Um, it's been interesting. I've been going along similar emotional and mental journeys with her as well, which is, I've learned a lot about myself through playing Nynaeve, so. Um, and yeah. if you don't mind a more simple question, what was your reaction when you found out The Wheel of Time was in like the top 10 selling series of all time? Was there a little more pressure when that was revealed to you? Uh, yes, there was, Daniel. <laughs> I yeah. didn't just reveal that now, did I? No, okay. wait, what do you mean? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, there was a lot of swear words, uh, cussing uh, through, my, through, my, through my head. Uh, but I don't know, it, it felt right from the beginning. I don't know how I kind of felt confident that I maybe could tackle something like this two years ago, but... Um, it's always it's always felt felt good felt felt that it's the it's it's I don't know I don't have words right now this is amazing this so is amazing of the pressure you may know that Nynaeve is a widely held favorite character um, do you do you feel that have you observed the social media and everyone like being super excited I, yes, about you playing Nynaeve yes I know this this braid gang braid braid nation. Um, <laughs> Do you know what? When I first when I first got the role, I, I used you guys as resources. Like I was watching your videos, I was on Reddit, I was I was, you know, searching up everything. And I found that, as you guys will know, I guess people didn't necessarily relate to her in their first read when they started when, when they were younger. But as time went on, as, as readers aged and as they, you know, did more read throughs, they understood her. That's something I love. I, you know, she's not she's not immediately likable to some people, but I think um, once you get her why and the motivations, it's, I mean, I love her to, to pieces. And, um, sorry, I'm going to have to grab you. Okay. Sorry. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you so Amazing. much. And enjoy the premiere. Thank you. Thank you, you for too. making this possible. Of course. Of <laughs> course. We love you guys. We have better confirmed that Marcus Rutherford is wearing Louis Vuittons. Just doing all the interviews like this, trying to get the red bottoms in. <laughs> How are you guys? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I've just been saying, I've seen a lot of people ask, is, is Perrin you know, tall enough? Yes. 
<laughs> we got it. We got it in. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. This is this is stop. Stop all those questions. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. How is it uh, coming on the carpet tonight? You feeling good? Uh, good, man. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time coming. I mean, I mean, we're talking to people who've loved the books, you know, a very, very long time. But in terms of when we started production, um, you know, we stopped and started COVID pandemic. It's amazing that everyone can be here in person to celebrate. Absolutely. Yeah. So were you aware that most people believe that Perrin is the ideal husband? Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. No, that's really? The thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I realize there's the people who love him. I'm getting a lot of like Daddy A. Barra. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's a lot. There's a yeah. lot of that. I mean, you have a future as a sex icon. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, which I'm not complaining about. <laughs> you know I mean, I'm just, like, I'm just like, keep it coming. I don't mind. So Perrin has like multiple dimensions. He goes from, you know, lovable to just kind of moody. Mm. What was it like going from, you know, the various stages of Perrin, I guess? Assuming that that happens in the show. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think what's really cool of a character like Perrin is, you know, if there's a really lead character, he's not he doesn't actually say that much in something like the, in the bigger scenes, which is quite cool. So you realise everything he's doing is very considered. There's been a thought process behind it. So you, as an actor, you there's a whole inner monologue going on in the scene before he's even said something. So you realise even just a smile, or if he gets angry, for example, there really has to be like a journey there to why he's getting angry, and it, there's like a shock before he even like gets to that gets to that moment. So um, yeah, for an actor to have someone in the scene who is thinking before he speaks. You have a whole kind of prep before you even say your line, so it's, it's, it's wicked. That's awesome. It's a character based in nuance, and I've often said it may be the most internal character yes. I've ever read. Yes. Like, he is someone who is just going to process and process. And the, so the performance, you have to just have those long silences. Yes. What did you learn to do to, like, you know, take advantage of, I'm not going to talk, it's here. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, th I, mean, I said to Ray for the start, I said, I know this is a huge show, amazing visual effects, but... For Perrin, I think a lot of it's going to be in just his looks, you know, his looks, and that, like as long as we get those moments, it's going to be really, really special. So close-ups. Like, there's close-ups, just the way he looks at his friends, the way he thinks. There's a lot of me, sort of. There's a lot. There's a lot of that. A lot of that. But it's got an old journey in itself with what he's thinking, and hopefully it comes across on screen. Hey, if you don't mind, one more quick question: yeah, yeah, yeah. What would your Aja be if you were an Aes Sedai? Gotta go red, man. I don't do if you see if you see Kate Fleetwood in this show, I it am is May well. May. Is she's so badass. <laughs> wow. The Andrew in this is just like she's so fierce. Went in the trailer where she oh my yeah, no, I can't. I can talk about it all time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, red. Mate, so, so lovely, much. so lovely to meet you. Absolutely, man. you as Big well. Fan. Thank you for all the work you do as well. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. you so much. My hand is freezing, I'm sorry. No, no. Same. Hello, oh, guys. How are you doing? It's very nice, nice to meet you, Mr. Green. Yes. Yeah, it's very, very nice, nice to meet you. you. Critter XC, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, too. Welcome I'm, to London. Thank, thank you. you so much. It's an amazing city. I've there fallen in love with it. I'm yeah. going to move here. How's yeah. your night going? Oh, man, it's going crazy. It's uh, it's very surreal to be here. The show's coming out. Uh, yeah, it's hard to put into words, to be honest with you. It's been two years, two long years of, of amazing challenges and a lot of work and not knowing sort of when the show was coming out and what was going to stop us again and but uh finally we're here and it's all happening so we're really pumped if you don't mind me asking you play a character who i don't like to say they have cracks exposed but they're one of the most solid characters ever in terms of just stoic and right. throughout the series it's more of an exploration of the tiny nuances that allow him to still be human how is tackling that as an actor it cannot be easy to try and bring emotion to someone who's just so solid it's not easy, and, and I think Lan has taught me so much about life, to be honest with you. I feel like he's made me a better man. He taught me, you know, as an actor, you, you feel like you want to perform sometimes, and the scenes require me to be very still and, and sort of stoic in the background a lot, and that was a big challenge, and I've, I've learned a lot through that. Um, obviously, Robert Jordan's writing is so brilliant, and I go to work every day hoping I can just do that justice. But... Um, yeah, it's, it's a process with that. It's a scene-by-scene -scene process with that, depending on what they write for him. But uh, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful journey. Yeah. yeah, sure. So the people are wondering, Lan is an incredible swordsman. Yeah. Are you now a master swordsman? Have you earned the hair and bark blade? <laughs> I don't know if I've earned it yet. <laughs> okay. I, I would consider myself a good swordsman. Okay. I spent, um, I spent weeks and months yeah. walking around Prague with it like tucked into my back. Okay. Questionably, but yeah, I'm all right now. We've uh, we've gotten to the point in season two, without giving too much away, that I've uh, I've had some pretty intense fights with uh, one fight where I actually get to pick up two swords. Okay. And that was that's a little teaser, but that was like a left left brain right brain thing. <laughs> You're trying to fight with two swords at once. It's it's pretty tough, but uh, yeah, I'm happy where I'm at. So. Yeah. 
Is this the most physically demanding role you've personally taken on? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it scared me, man, to be honest with you. The first time I, I sat down with our stunt team and they, they laid out the winter night fight when it was 150 beats. Wow. And, uh, it's like at one point they were like, you're going to jump up on a Trollocs back. I said, sitting down. I was like, ha, ah, standing. <laughs> and I met like one of the baby Trollocs. Like, no, the eight foot Trolloc. And we're going to have you, you know, stab him in the sort of trapezius muscle and steer him. And you're going to kill him and he's going to fall. And then you're going to, you're going to front flip with the sword in your hand and tuck it. And you're going to come out of that directly into another move. I just thought there's no way in hell I can do this. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to, I can't. And then, but you can, you can, you can push yourself that way. And this, this show is, uh, it's really showed me that, so I'm really, really proud of that sequence. That, I think, did not make the final cut, but okay. <laughs> it might have made one of the trailers. Beautiful. But uh, it is what it is. In addition to that challenge, you also have to have this synergy with Rosemond's Moraine. So is that something you guys had to consciously keep in mind of basically moving with her throughout the combat and action, and even just walking scenes? Like, how has that connection come through to you? It's been very organic. Strangely enough, with Rosemond and I, we... Um, Right from the get-go, we got along so well. It was sort of uncanny. And we call each other sort of warder Aes Sedai through text. So we kind of speak in character, which is really kind of weird. <laughs> Little things you admit. But we just have a bond, no pun intended. We really do. And we talk late at night about issues that are concerning Wheel of Time, that are concerning life. I'm close with her family. I spend a lot of time with her because her whole family's here, or in Prague, sorry. And I'm sort of by myself. And so I've kind of like the sixth wheel, I guess. I'll go over there, hang out with them. <laughs> we spent a lot of time working on the fights and working with her movement coach and choreographing my sequence around her sequence and making sure that movement worked. And we just hope that it shows and that people can see how much time we put in. So Land Eve is a much loved ship. You may know that. What is it? Uh, Land Eve. That's oh, your Land ship name. Oh, this one. Did okay, you not okay. know? So um, okay. how was you, we've heard like how you and Moraine or Rosamond sort of like developed this bond, but have you how was it like developing the chemistry uh, with your They're asking about interest? our chemistry. Yeah. Do you wanna come talk about your chemistry? I don't wanna sorry, I don't wanna okay, you we gotta get there. Ask how <laughs> we developed our chemistry. Um what did we do, Daniel? Uh, what did we do? Well, she's, right from the get-go, we kind of had a dinner. I think so, which is crazy because we never had a chemistry read. We never auditioned together. Yeah. I think I met you in, where did I meet you? I feel like we met in Jordan Studios in the very small cast green room. Yeah. We were just hanging out in between sweaty workout sessions. We were, uh, we were the only two casts that hadn't really met, which really? is interesting considering sort of how the characters end up. But it's been really organic and it's been really yeah. special. And... Uh, yeah, whenever I have scenes with Zoe, I'm really, really excited because it's just, it's a super, there's an ease to it. There's a, there's a, a natural sort of feel to it. So yeah, we're I really mean, excited about it. Does the character of Nynaeve intimidate you? Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she intimidates me. All the women intimidate me on this, on this show. They're amazing. But uh, she is, uh, yeah, very formidable and really incredibly talented. How are you doing? I'm good. Oh, I'm doing wonderful. Hello, hello. How are you doing? You warm enough? I mean, we're I was going to ask you the same. Are you warm enough? <laughs> yeah, I mean, those three glasses of champagne definitely helped before. <laughs> we're good, we're good. Yeah. I, if you could slip me one of those, massively appreciate it. Find me inside. Got Find you. me inside, yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind, I've had a question I've been wanting to ask since I saw the first trailer drop. Go on. And it's only escalated and escalated. Yeah. Because we've seen you be thrown into water. Yes. We've seen you drown in a river. We've yes. seen you hit a trollic with a board. Yes. And it seems that you have been the one who's just been thrown the most physically demanding scenes. Yeah. H how has that been? What was it like faking drown? Hopefully faking drowning. Uh, well, at the time, <laughs> not really. Um, yeah. Look, don't let the boys' muscles fool you. Okay. Yeah, they're not the only ones that have to be. No. Um, it's been great. I mean, look, the body's been through a lot of things, but um, we've we've made it here, okay, in one piece. But. Look, it's, it's just one of those jobs. This is the world and this is what the characters go through and um, it's amazing to, to 
to do that, not only emotionally go to those places with them, but physically. It's yeah. so important too. And like with the cliff, I was like, I can't have somebody else do that. Because this is a huge moment for Egwene and I've got to do it. Okay. So you, you may know? know this, probably not. I'm Egwene Alvira on Twitter. Um, she, she stole that from you. I love it. <laughs> she's my favorite character. Yay! So what is it like to play the best character in the Wheel of Time? I mean... <laughs> the best character probably in the world I think I've ever yeah. written <laughs> honestly um no it's it's a dream come true you know I just knew I was like whether I get this role or not I'll be so sad if I do not get this role I'll quit acting I'll, I'll quit um but I, I, words cannot explain and I'm just so thankful that Wraith and Kelly Hendry who is our brilliant casting director believed in me that I could do this and you know bring this just bring this character to bring justice to this character <laughs> It's there we go, cold got that. and it's... Uh, no, 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 it's a fine way. Well, I yeah. just also want to say your work outside of acting, your activism is so inspiring. Thank you, Thank you so much Thank for all that you. work. And I just want to say you're playing the ultimate underdog, the character who, in my opinion, just goes through challenge after challenge, not to get into spoilers, but it's just so impressive. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what you're going to bring to the character Thank season after season. Thank Amazon. All right. Yeah, Amazon. Just, just crowbar that in there. <laughs> Oh, well, we've been tapped several times to let you go. This was incredible. Thank you, guys. Okay. Also, we love you guys online, and we love watching you guys, and you're amazing. Thank, Thank you. Guys. We love you, too. It's 1 a.m., and I have to wake up to go get on an airplane in far less than eight hours, and I just want to record something to end this vlog. I'm not sure if it's come across uh, in the footage here just how surreal and wild <laughs> this last 72 hours has been. Sure never thought I'd be here doing stuff like this. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone. I, I don't know how to not sound like a cliche asshole content creator. But I know that a lot of those people are very sincere when they say I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for y'all. And it's just been incredible, this whole journey. Like ever since I started doing this full time, it's felt like I was just a sale going forward just never able to look around and now i'm kind of shifting where it's like okay stop appreciate and i want to i want to be able to finally do that um it's been a lot of 12 16 hour days and working weekends and i just i'm hitting a stage where i'm like all right this is now paying off and it's okay to relax <laughs> So I don't, I've been drinking. <laughs> That's not obvious. And um, just thank you, everyone. And uh, I don't have words. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's not just crazy because it's the show. It's crazy because of the opportunity. It's crazy because of the people you meet. Huge shout out to Critter, Amanda the Jedi. People already knew like Mad Hatch. Uh, Justin Nablus, you know, Sarah Nakamura, who has made so much of this possible and has been such a friend to me uh, and a shoulder for so long. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know what to say. I am deeply emotional in a very numb way, and I don't know what that means. Uh, it's probably a mixture of jet lag, alcohol, adrenaline, and caffeine all just flooding through me. But, uh, I don't know. This feels either like it's coming across sincere like I mean it to, or remarkably not. But it is, because I've spent the last two days trying to figure out why the hell I'm here. And I don't know still. I've done a lot of just talking a lot of just talking, but I'm now going to start editing this vlog together, and we're going to, uh, I'm going to try and convey to you what this experience has been like, but I know that's not possible. Man, I was just a kid from Cat Harpen who liked Legos. <laughs> uh, the carpet was blue, not red.